right, well, hi guys, I am Lacey Sheffield. I am the Director of Parks and Rec at Historic, Historic Cane Hill. Um, that might sound weird, me speaking about history and being the Parks and Rec Director. Um, we only have four employees and it makes it very hard to be able to cover everything with only four of us. So um, I do take more of the research portion of our history and so that's why I'm here today. Um, we're gonna talk about, first we're gonna talk a little bit about Cane Hill College. Uh, the Cane Hill College is the first college in Arkansas. It was also the first women's college in Arkansas. So it's kind of a big deal <laughs> right now, especially with tomorrow being International Women's Day. So we'll go ahead and get started in this. So in case you don't know where Cane Hill is, which I feel like almost everyone here knows where Cane Hill is. <laughs> we'll skip through this. Um, it's up in Northwest Arkansas. You can go out toward past Prairie Grove, because everybody's usually been to Prairie Grove, <laughs> um, and you go on down to Cane Hill and Clyde area. Um, we own about 88 acres and about 13 historic buildings there. Uh, we care for all of those, and here we are. <laughs> we also have about four miles worth of hiking trails, and that's the majority of my job is building those trails, but I'm speaking to y'all today. <laughs> so um, the first settlers of Cane Hill were from Middle Tennessee. Um, you can actually go visit the site of where they actually came from today in the Montgomery Bell State Park. Uh, that is actually uh, one of the first homes in that area that they have preserved there. Um, they also have one of the first Presbyterian churches from the Cumberland Presbyterians. Uh, the group that came here were Cumber Cumberland Presbyterians. Uh, they first um, went down to Arkansas Post and then they mo migrated up to uh, Crystal Hill, Arkansas, and then on to Cane Hill. They um, moved because they kept going through some flooding issues and about 30 of them died of malaria, so they were looking for a new home. Uh, they had heard of this place called Cane Hill. They had heard it was very similar to Mill, Tennessee. So to give you all an idea, can anybody tell me the difference between the Boston Mountains and the Cumberland Mountains? <laughs> Those are two different pictures, I promise. <laughs> so the one on the left is the Boston Mountains. Um, technically, the Boston Mountains is a separate area of the Ozarks. Uh, we do sometimes loop ourselves into the Ozarks, but we are the Boston Mountains, and uh, the namesake of Cain Hill, uh, I was explaining to Daniel a while ago, uh, it's not Cain as in Cain and Abel, that spelling it's K-A-N-E as in Cain Pole. Uh, when they said when they first settled Cain Hill, the cane was so thick that they would lose cows in it and they, the cows would die before they could find them. <laughs> so that's the namesake. Um, Cane Hill grew very, very fast, and by um, 1834, after being settled, settled in 1827, uh, it was booming enough for them to open a school. So in 1834, a Cane Hill school was opened. Um, it eventually began growing even more, and in, sorry, my dates aren't great on this, 1850, the uh, Arkansas State Legislature actually gave Cane Hill School the authority to uh, hand out high school diplomas. Um, a few, uh, they actually ended up changing their name to Cane Hill Collegiate Institute. Um, in 1852, they could now um, hand out four-year degrees. This is when it turned into Cane Hill College. So the photo you see here is actually one of the only surviving photos of the original college. Um, during the Civil War, this building was destroyed during our Civil War battle in 1830, or 30. 63, I think. <laughs> but um, we actually had, the campus was so large, they had four four story brick buildings when it was destroyed. It was a massive campus and uh, <laughs> it was destroyed during the Civil War battle. Um, when it, uh, and actually in 1952, before that all happened, the Women's College opens. Uh, the Women's College is actually completely separate from the Cane Hill College, but they were under the same name. Uh, it was actually down the road in Clyde. It Clyde's about, oh, maybe two minutes down the road from Cane Hill. <laughs> it's a, for, a very short little drive. If you'd like to go see where that site is, there's actually a stone marker that it was way too cold to get out the other day to take a picture of it. <laughs> it's been about seven degrees all week up there, so I haven't been out much. <laughs> um, but uh, this building right here is actually today's, our Methodist manse. Um, the school girls actually started out in this building learning. Uh, they eventually moved on to the uh, Clyde building, and they built that, and then after they decided to integrate all together after the Civil War, they all were in the Cane Hill College building behind our office, so. In 
1861, the college closed due to war. Um, much of the students actually joined a regiment together and they all went to war together, um, being led by Major Earl. Major Earl, if you may have heard him, of him before, he fought at the Battle of Jenkins Ferry uh, in Leola, Arkansas. And he was also very involved with the Arkansas State uh, teaching world. He uh, would come down and kind of fight for students' rights a lot. Um, move on to the next slide here. In 1868, this building was built. This is the only surviving photo of this building. It was a wood frame structure. And in 1885, it was burned down. Now the story, by, the so-called story behind the burning of the building was because of Cane Hill being so staunchly Presbyterian, the man had been ran out of town because he was a moonshiner. Um, he was very angry about this and came back and burned down the building, supposedly. <laughs> so kind of a fun little story there. In 1886, the college building was rebuilt um, to the building we have today. Uh, most of the building we have today is original. Um, during the 1940s, it was heavily changed on the outside, so we don't have, we have a lot of new brick put in the building, but it, most of the flooring is original inside the building. And, uh, but in 1887, the college closed after being built, rebuilt in 1886. College closed and moved on to Clarksville, Arkansas, where the University of Ozarks is now. Um, the University of Ozarks actually still brings their students to Cane Hill for a freshman orientation class. <laughs> so they still come back to their roots, and they, um, they're still Presbyterian. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a big story within itself. It comes down to they actually never had a formal city government. The church ran everything. And so when the railroads began coming through, they said, we want to come through Cane Hill since it is the center of commerce in Washington County at the time, and we want to build a rail, rail, railroad. Well, they did not want the sin that came with the railroad, like the bars and other said things that would come with that. And so they said, no, you can't come through here. So the railroad came through Fayetteville, and everything then moved to Fayetteville. <laughs> and they couldn't move to Fayetteville because the University of Arkansas opened up shortly after they, they opened. So, <laughs> And the women's college actually suffered greatly because the University of Arkansas immediately started admitting women. So <laughs> it drew a lot of women that way instead. So in our, um, oh, missed a slide there. Um, it actually became a high school in 1891. The building was used until 1956 as a high school. It was a four room high school. <laughs> um, it was a uh, first through 12th grade all in one building. And uh, they were, I think the last class had a whopping three people in it <laughs> to graduate. So uh, during 50, uh, 1956, they were told to consolidate. There was actually only three African-American students in the African-American school down the road, so they said, well, but we'll just go on to Lincoln. <laughs> so they actually all moved into Lincoln. Currently, um, the bus that leaves from Lincoln in the morning, the first bus to go out to the Oklahoma border and pick students up leaves at 5 a.m. to pick up students. So <laughs> it's quite the drive for them. They consolidate, consolidated a huge area because um, of the Oklahoma border being there. Um, there's some, I know there's one student in one of my classes I go to, he uh, comes from almost down in Van Buren area <laughs> to come up. So, <laughs> so the women in Cane Hill, um, kind of the reason I'm talking about this is that, you know, they say that behind every man is a stronger woman. <laughs> and uh, we had several women in our history that really stuck out to me and stuck out to several other people in uh, Cane Hill. So we're going to kick it off with Miss Nancy Wright. Um, this is the only known photo of her. Um, this is actually kind of a terribly sad story, but she did prevail. Um, in 1839, uh, it might probably started out as a normal June day for her and her family. They went to town, they sold their pork, they were pork salesmen in town, and they came on back out, and about 9 o'clock that night, some men ran, rolled up to their house and knocked on the door. They were looking for a place to stay, and supposedly they had been early, there early that day, and the, her husband, uh, William, had turned them away once, uh, once before. Well, they came back that night, asked again, and uh, when he said no, they shot him. Um, they did, uh, she escaped, and she ran a mile and a half to the closest home um, and uh, was trying to get help. Um, along with this is her daughter, Marianne. Marianne is also the second person to escape from the house when this all started going on. And she ran and hid in the woods with one of her older cousins that was staying with them. Um, the men then went in and killed three of the children, and then two of them hid in a tremble bed and uh, 
stayed there until they started catching the house on fire. Um, they began catching the house on fire after they sold the money out of the house, and the, uh, Mary Ann actually went into the house while it was burning and pulled the little boys out of the trommel bed. Um, they, got out, they actually had permanent scarring from the burns. They, that's how light they had waited to get out of the building. And uh, they all were safe by the end of it, minus the three children and the father. And uh, Miss Nancy, she eventually, she and uh, Mary Ann both moved back to Tennessee shortly after. It was very quick. Um, the uh, legal trial went on pretty quickly, <laughs> as most of the uh, Frontier Day trials would go. And um, they moved back to Tennessee. She then got remarried and had six more children, <laughs> um, naming one of them Arkansas for the sorrow she experienced while she was there. And she, um, Arkansas ended up going by the name of Anne, and they had descendants still in uh, Tennessee today. <laughs> so, my next woman um, is Miss, sorry about that, Amanda Buchanan Earl. So earlier I mentioned Major Earl. Major Earl was the president of the college. He was also a preacher at the a Presbyterian church there in town for 20 years, and he also was a major of the Civil War. Um, she was actually from Cane Hill, but she went to uh, she moved to Oxford, Mississippi, for the women or female union college uh, for education, and came back and began teaching at the or high school there, or the grade school they had there in town. Um, she and Earl met right before the war. A war. Um, they began writing letters. We actually had those love letters from them in the war. Um, the, uh, we have some of them, and the University of Arkansas has the rest. Um, they, um, he actually proposes to her over a letter <laughs> while he was still in the war. They waited till the end of the war, even though he was through town whole, a, a lot during the war. They got married after the war. Um, they ended up becoming the only two professors left at the Cane Hill College by the end of it. So she taught literature and art and was the only art teacher for the last bit of it. Um, Cane Hill was actually known as a very good art school to go to in the... <laughs> greater sense of things. Um, this is actually, the picture on her left is her self-portrait. So, <laughs> she did one of her and Earl right after they got married, so. Uh, we actually still have their home. Um, it did implode on itself uh, back in the 90s, but we still had the foundation and everything else there, and uh, we still have the college, of course, and the church, so. Um, I actually don't have a photo for our next lady. Um, there's not a whole lot we know about her other than she's actually the mom of the man who built the house I currently live in, and that was pretty much it. But we started doing some digging and doing some more research uh, during the Cane Hill uh, Story project. Um, Still on the Hill is a popular Ozark band. Um, they might, they've come down here for one or two concerts recently, and uh, they wrote, wanted to write some stories about the Civil War. Uh, they came across the story of Lou Lacey. Uh, Lou Lacey was a probably in her 14 or 15 when the Civil War was going on. And um, towards the very end, some Union soldiers were moving through Cane Hill. And somebody was taking pop shots at them. Um, so they came into town, and the custom then was either take a teenage boy or the old, eldest man in town, whoever couldn't go to war, and you'd hang them for whatever crime that you didn't have a actual culprit for. And so they came up and they um, hung three different men, um, all over the age of 60. <laughs> and uh, told the people that if they ever cut the bodies down, they would also hang. And so the girls wanted to give them a proper burial, and so Lou Lacey and two other girls took two ox and a wagon out in the middle of the night, climbed into the uh, gallows, and cut down the men, and then um, with their families uh, gave them burials. And uh, one of the women actually took some family quilts and wrapped the bodies in to make sure they were buried properly. <laughs> So we, we always like Blue Lacey and her bravery on, uh, going up there, even though they told been banned to actually cut the bodies down. Um, her song is called the Cane Hill Hanging Song. If you ever check out the album, uh, they talk about her a little bit in there. Um, the, the song says they, that they hung them on a tree. We actually had gallows at that point in time. So, And our, my last lady to talk about today is Miss Ar Araminta um, Richardson. Um, her family actually lives in Little Rock today. Um, her, I think it's nephew, maybe great nephew kind of thing. <laughs> uh, he actually lives here and in town today. Um, his, his granddaughter is actually about to get married at Cane Hill and she'll be the fifth generation in Cane Hill to be married at the church. Um, so, uh, but this is Miss Araminta. Um, the story I heard about Araminta when I first came to Cane Hill was quite the love story, could have been made into a movie. She apparently moved to Cane Hill, she's from Texas, moved to Cane Hill, and uh, 
at a college and met this boy from Lincoln. And they fell madly in love and they were set to get married. Well, World War II kicked up and that ended that. He actually got deployed very uh, quickly and she never saw him again. So she had heard that he had been shot down. She went to go search for him and so she got, joined the military so she could look for him. I actually met her nephew the other day, and uh, that is not the story that the family knows, <laughs> of course. Uh, somebody romanticized it a little bit too much. Um, story is somewhat right. She did meet a man, he did go to war, and uh, she was very stricken by his death. But instead of being wanting to go look for him, she just wanted to serve in his place. So she ended up joining the Navy. She uh, was in the Navy for 15 years, and uh, she was a, a x-ray technician for the Navy. <laughs> so. Um, she moved in with actually, crazy enough, uh, Miss Amanda Earl I spoke about earlier, she moved in with Amanda Earl's daughter when she moved to Cane Hill. Uh, she was still living there and she was helping her in her older days. Supposedly, according to her nephew, she got tired with, uh, she had all brothers and she got tired of living with the boys so she moved to Arkansas. <laughs> so that's a supposed story on that. Um, But um, he did end up dying, and she did serve, and she stayed in, and she actually was in North Carolina for a good period of time serving for the military. She, when she came back, she then became a traveling piano teacher. Uh, she would actually go live with different families in Northwest Arkansas, teach the children how to play piano, and then move on to the next family. Um, she was also the band director of the Bentonville High School. <laughs> so she had quite the life up there. Um, in her uh, later years, she ended up uh, learning how to drive. She did not learn how to drive until 1950. Got a little picture of her by her car. <laughs> um, she did not learn to drive until the uh, 1950s, and uh, she eventually moved back to Cane Hill in the home that uh, her aunt had originally had. And she uh, taught a music camp at the Cane Hill College after it closed. And so you go up there and you spend the week with her learning how to pian play piano. I heard this from somebody at church re recently that she was one of the meanest piano teachers you ever met in your life, but she was really sweet. <laughs> she was really, really sweet. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, she taught piano for, um, until her death, actually. Um, so, that's our main hardcore women of Cane Hill history. Does anybody have any questions? 